Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. City, this is Theater Talk. I'm the show's producer, Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. The Age of Aquarius has redawned. The wonderful musical from 1968, Hair, is being revived now on Broadway to tremendous success. And we're very pleased here at Theater Talk to have with us Jim Rado, who wrote the original lyrics and book for Hair and starred in it as Claude, Galt McDermott, who wrote the wonderful score for Hair, and Gavin Creel, now starring on Broadway as Claude, the role that Jim originated back in 1968. Welcome all of you. Yes, and congratulations on the talk. success of the Congratulations show. on this Thanks. wonderful, newly relevant version of Hair. So I'm going to ask you, Jim, to start. Why in 2009 <laughs> is Hair speaking so profoundly to audiences? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you decided not to prepare. So I'm gonna, you I decided not to prepare. All right. Don't, don't prepare. But, but, I, but I, was, I was thinking last night, uh, well, if, if I am asked that question, what is my answer now? And I'm, um, mm. I, 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 I saw something last night, and I can't remember what it was, but, uh, oh, I know what it was, uh, 19, a production of 1984. Oh. And which I, it's sort of the diametric opposite yes, of hair. Yes, it is, yeah. And uh, I, I thought... You know, there is that type of mentality in the world that exists in 1984 and in our world. And I think uh, hair is a vital piece to remind us of what happened in the 60s. I'm so, the thing that I'm most proud of is that we did capture that uh, movement that happened. At, at that you time. could make the case that uh, had that movement, that spirit of the 1960s, that hair captured, had that not happened, you could have had a 1984 world. You could have had a totalitarian world had you not had civil rights movement, women's uh, rights movement coming out in the 60s, that really breaking away from uh, um, sort of an older America at the time. <laughs> um, I'm curious, uh, Galt, can you take us back to the very, very beginnings of Hair? How did it come together? I mean, where did the idea come from? What's the first song you wrote? Well, well, yeah, well the yeah. idea came from these guys, Jerry and Jim. <laughs> and I met Jim first. Jerry didn't want to meet me. He wanted Jerry Jim. Ragney. Jerry Ragney. He I don't remember that. I yeah, know. yeah. He didn't want to see me. He wanted Jim's opinion. <laughs> so I met Jim. And then Where Jim, did we meet? At Nat Superior's. Oh, yeah. But but you but you and Jerry Ragney had been working on hair for quite a while before you met Galt. Oh right? yes, we we basically kind of finished uh, a the workshop. Piece. We had yeah. a, we had a script. And it, we we needed the music for the lyrics, yes. which existed. Right. So, so we've been worked on, we're working on it for about two two and a half years. Right. So wait a minute, you had no composer when you were writing a musical. That's correct. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I had dabbled in uh, I I had done uh, some musical shows myself in which I had actually composed music. So we were doing dummy uh, melodies for the songs. Mm. We were kind of. Singing them, you know. What did you think of those uh, those those dummy well, melodies? I used to take a day to forget them. I'd say, okay, <laughs> I, I gotta forget these melodies. <laughs> but did you have the lyrics that now exist, Jim? Did like this, did Good Morning Starshine and the Dawning of Aquarius and, and you know? The, yes, they were. You all, had all those there. Yes, yes. So this was really poetry that you and Jerry Ragney had written. Yes, but they were intended. They were structured as songs. Yes. They were to be sung. They were intended to be sung. Mm. What inspired you and Jerry Ragney to, to take on this piece about hippies in the first place? Well, I guess uh, it just hit us in the face. We, it was right there in front of us. You were down we in the were, East we, Village, we, yeah. we were down in the East Village. We were up on Broadway doing 
shows, and uh, well, then we were in an experimental theater. At off, La Mama, right? <clears throat> no, not no, La, not Mama, La Mama. At uh, the Open Theater uh, the open on theater, Spring yeah. Street, mm -hmm. one of the first lofts, yes. artistic lofts over there. And uh, um, so we were interested in the experimenting in theater. We, we, were, we were doing sort of straight Broadway th plays, Shakespeare or whatever, and um, then uh, there's this other movement, this experimental theater movement happening off Broadway and or way off, off, you know, off loft. Yeah, you might say. yeah. <laughs> and um, we were very intrigued by that. But suddenly, as we were going between the two places, the two locales, we would see these things happening on the street. People were marching by with picket signs and. Guys were growing their hair long yes. and all these incredible costumes that they were wearing. And the and children just hanging out, yes, young people yes, hanging, yes, out, yes, yes. hanging so out. So that this uh, was so a, it really another, came from what you saw, just yes, wandering in the streets. It was another form of theater happening in the streets. Kevin, okay, I want to ask you. Um, you, I don't think we're around in nineteen early sixties no. when this was coming <laughs> together. Um, but I know you studied um, you studied musical theater at uh, University of Michigan. Um, is this, is Hair one of the principal shows that uh, students of musical theater lear learn about? And when did you first come across it? Honestly, I, I, University of Michigan's training when I was there was a lot more in the golden age. And, and, and this, I, even though it is... So you mean My Fair Lady? Yeah, yeah, yeah pre-1960, honestly. Yeah. You know, for the most part, anyway. But I just, I actually came, Hair came into my life when I was at... Um, nine years old and I went to the Finley Hancock County Public Library and checked out you could rent or borrow CDs and CDs had just come out and I was like oh CDs and I got three musicals because I was I thought oh musicals because I really wasn't into musicals or anything it was Assassins, Guys and Dolls and no it wasn't Assassins because I got that later but Hair was the one of the first ones and mm. I'd learned words that I'd never learned before <laughs> <laughs> I was like what is this you know and I just thought did your parents know you were listening to Hair? I don't think they did. <laughs> but, but Gavin, did. did you find Hair relevant to your generation? No, I mean, at the time, or I'd, I'd say it was now, only nine. Well, now I would or, but say. But as you've grown, do you, do you is there a relevance in Hair to your yeah. generation? Well, you know what I think the strength of this production is, yeah. and, and and the piece uh, on it speaks to I think everyone because there is a person who wants to fit in there wants to belong to a tribe there's there's in everyone there's a place you want to be but also I think there's in the inside everyone there's a bit of an activist there's just like a closet activist or whatever and I feel I feel what's amazing about this is at the time you wrote something that was about what was happening and people were active and they were they were angry and the protesting draft. the war oh yeah, yeah. And now I just feel a lot of apathy in our yeah. in our younger generation, and I think I hope that people I hope the show's here for a nice long time. And people, I see it already happening now outside the stage door. The young people who come to see it are just like, this is the greatest theater experience I've ever been to. Like, oh, I had a guy who wrote me a missive last night. I just had to. I know that you probably don't want to know about this, but I need to touch on a few things that I can't stop thinking about since uh -huh. I saw the show. My anger, my complacency. Yeah. My love, my sexuality, like all these things. You respond to these kind of letters from fans? I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to that one because it was literally one of the most beautiful. And I thought, just a young guy who's like, I'm angry that I'm so complacent. I'm angry that I'm so, you know. Mm. But, Cole, you and I were talking uh, earlier about this, that in, in this, uh, this new version, the horror of the death of war, I think but your director uh, has emphasized that more. I found that this version far more chilling. And, well, and, and yeah, I wouldn't say chilling. I think it's moving. What, what moving, moves me yes. about it is that the kids have a, are so fond of each other, and they're very concerned that this guy yeah. is going to go to the war, the and war. they don't. They keep denying it. And the way Diane's brought it out, you, you, you sense all the way through that there's a, a conflict about yes. something. Yeah. And my, my feeling is that it, 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 it's, it, it's sad is not the right word, it's just move. At the end of this version, and I saw it first in the park when they did it two years ago, I was weeping, I was weeping, and I was weeping because of the war in Iraq. Yes. And I was yes. weeping because you know, we're doing it again. We're sending the boys to die. Yeah. Well, what I'm proud and girls proudest yeah. of this of this production is that it's not anachronistic. It's not no. doing like it's not winking at the audience mm -mm. and saying think about Afghanistan, think about Iraq. Mm -hmm. She was like, we're in 1967. We're doing this play, and that's who we are. We are these people. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, but I love that it's like, let, let you, let the audience complete the blank and fill in the blank and go, mm -hmm. you know, it makes me think about my life now. Why am, why am I not more yeah. involved with the war in yeah. Iraq? Stuff? And it's amazing that you say that, I think, you know. Now, on an intellectual note, the nudity. Uh, was that, <laughs> you know, was actually, that, it was golf's idea. I was going to ask you, I mean, was the nudity, uh, it is, you know, very famous for having, I think, the first nude scene on Broadway? Well, it, it, it's so funny because that nude scene, it lasts for how many seconds? Two. <laughs> <laughs> you want it longer? <laughs> how, I mean, no. what, 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 how, did, how did the nude scene come about? Was it just a natural thing to well, take your clothes Jim off Jim has to tell you that, but we, there was no nude scene in Joe's production downtown. Joe but Papp's was, production. But yeah. there was the idea for the nude scene in Joe Papp's production. And, Joe Papp, we got a note from the office. We sent, we sent a message to the office saying, you know, at this point we were having a, some nudity. And we got a note back saying, no, you aren't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you were in conflict happened. with Joe Papp. How no, did you win the conflict? No, no, but no, well, we lost with Joe. You always do. But no. when we went to Broadway, <laughs> no, there was a story that, that you had for why there was nudity. The two guys in the park? The two guys in the park took their clothes off. Yeah, it was a great moment of, uh, you know, what, liberation? I mean, yeah, yeah. we'd never seen anything. And I had had an experience, an experience in the park. I won't, I'm, this is the last time I'm going to tell this story. <laughs> I don't think I've told it on TV, but I was, before I knew Jerry, before, you know, uh, hair came to be, before the hippies came around, one day I was in, up in Central Park and I stretched out on a rock in the sun and took my shirt off and I was laying there with my eyes closed and suddenly I felt a club hit my shoe and I looked up and it was a policeman saying, put your shirt back on. <gasps> So this was this must have been early '60s, but this was the kind of atmosphere we that existed. The initial reception for hair, um, I know, got quite good reviews, but it was a different time, and you still had a lot of people who wouldn't be caught dead wearing short pants; they'd be wearing hats down the street. Was there um, resistance to hair? Was there a contingent of this town that was against hair? Did they think, what is this doing to our classic Broadway shows? Well, there were people. There were re reviews that weren't good. Mm. I think, weren't there? Yeah, there were a couple. Uh, a few. Yeah. We had a few. And what was the, what were their objections? I never read those. But, but it I, was I, too freeform. A lot of people didn't like the music. I, I oh. read one guy said, it's, it, it, the, the music doesn't d deserve to be on the same stage as, you know. My Fair Rogers. Lady and the Golden Age yeah. shows. But uh, speaking of the, you know, because the Golden Age was just ending, but, but Galt, your score from Hair was really the last score out of which came several top ten pop songs. Pop yeah. songs. That, no, true. that doesn't happen anymore, but you, you know. Well, there's no pop music anymore. No, either. but you had Age of Aquarius and Hair Itself and Good Morning Starshine and all these covers that were, that were to be huge, hard. easy to oh, be hard. Oh, mm, wonderful. Yes. Do you wonderful. have any sense why... Aside from Hair, and then some of the an later uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber, Tim Rice shows, um, rock music never really caught on on Broadway. I mean, a lot of people thought Hair would spawn lots of rock musicals that would last, and it didn't. Do you, do you have a sense why? <laughs> I don't know. I th Go ahead. No, I don't know either. I mean, I, I don't know. But it has now. It I has. think it, it was it, ahead of its time. Yeah, we had to wait yeah, for rent, what? really. That was how mm -hmm. many years later? 30 years later or something. But what was your sense of that? I mean, did you think you guys had unleashed something new to change the musical theater at the time, and then no one followed it up? No. I think we wanted to present something that was very new, very radical, and we wanted to shock people. We wanted to stir people. We wanted to move people, certainly. Mm -hmm. But we were just concerned about our piece uh, being, you know, we wanted to, it to be wonderful and to be something that really would work in a, in a theater yeah. in no, a new I way. No, but I made a definite effort to write rock and roll music. Yes, absolutely. That's and I mean, that's what the, we wanted. Yeah, but well, that's what you said you wanted, so I figured well, that's exactly what I want to do. It's about all I could do, well. but, I, <laughs> but it, was, uh, it was deliberate. And I think some people didn't like that, mm -hmm. uh, that idea. Well, they weren't the ready. Time. They weren't ready. I, I, I do have to bring up a serious topic. Um, Watch out. Watch out. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, here it comes. Uh, so you played in here for, for a while, and, uh, and it was a great success. But I've read reports and actually talked to people who were in the cast that a as things went on, because there was a dark side to the, to the peace, love, hippie movement, and that even in the company of hair, there was uh, a lot of drug abuse backstage. Some people had nervous breakdowns. One member of your company died of hair. Well, all right. <laughs> but here you sit, darling. Uh, and then we'll ask no, you what's going on but, backstage but, at yeah. the current No, no, but, but this is my point. <laughs> that, but, but, and, 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 that, 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 but, and there were orgies backstage, and that was fine, except people wouldn't make their entrances on time. And that, that you know, <laughs> what, and one member of the that. cast died of heroin overdose. And, and, yeah. and that these things, and that, that 
things happened to the heads of the kids. Part of it was the generation, but part of it was this, all this success that happened so quickly. What can you say to the new company to avoid that? I think yeah. something must and should be said to them. And I, I, I've been thinking about this in my own mind. I, I want to formulate something, and I want to, I want to sit down with everybody and talk about this very subject. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What can happen? You know, here you are in the midst of this great success, and you're all becoming seen and known and uh, starting careers and careers being yeah. advanced, like advanced, <laughs> we might say. I want to say something about him. I think I'm, I'm so happy, very, 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 and so often not happy with the person playing Floyd. I wonder why. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, he's, 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 he's something beauty. special, absolutely wonderful. Oh, What do you want to yeah. tell these kids, though? You were starting yeah. that you were going to say. What do I want to tell these kids? I be want to free. Be free. No, because be free. they got don't free. Don't I have to say, what, yeah. we we hear the stories about the methamphetamine shots and and the mm -hmm. and the, yes, the, the behavior and stuff like that. But I think I, I just go back to there was no that before this, so they were mm -hmm. inventing it as it was happening. Yes. We have a that we know what that was. And yes. you've so seen the pitfalls. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and I mean. What's great is that I, I, I'm not, you know, a total, I, I consider myself a professional, but I'm still building a career. And Will, who plays Burger, who's phenomenal, does, is doing the same thing. And there's uh, Megan Lawrence, for example, who's a veteran of the stage, and she plays the mother, and there's, there, uh, there are more people, forgive me, but there are enough of us that, like, I had, Will and I had a talk with the cast before we opened, as we were sitting in doing a, a drum circle on the opening night. Like, it never happens like that, when the cast is, Bonded. We're always obsessed with getting the flowers and making sure everything's done. We had a sit down and we said, it, we savor this because it doesn't happen like this in other shows I've been in. And he and Will said, pay attention to one another and take care of yourselves. And we keep that's, reiterating that's good. that. So maybe it's been said already. Take maybe. care of yourselves. Yeah, I, think, I, I think it's exaggerated. What you're saying, I never heard about orgies. Oh, basically. no. I, I was playing the piano. I never heard an orgy. I've, I've, <laughs> I've never <laughs> heard an orgy. It was a quiet orgy. It was a really no, soft no, piano. No, no. You missed out on the fun, though. <laughs> I, 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 no, I guess well, I did, but I survived it. Yeah, no. Indeed. No, but, I, but, I, but I did my I research on this. I did my research on this. You never heard orgies backstage like Thurlow Miller. But they would miss But they would miss their... That Harry and Harris was... Oh, she's a wild lady. But, no, but, they, but they'd miss their entrances, and then there were stories that people didn't even know who was going to sing Aquarius until the curtain went up. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> well, it's a very crowded. tiring, it's a very energetic yeah. show. It takes strength. Yeah. And people get worn out. <laughs> they need a nothing. <laughs> well, yeah. but I guess, though, I mean, you guys are, you, as you say, it was, a very, it was a good point that they were experimenting in the 60s with this kind of behavior, yes. with this sort of drug Absolutely. use, with yes. breaking the boundaries. Expression. Expression. I mean, I'm glad to hear not this about shorts, you and not Will and people yeah. who... Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Them. As a company member, like, I, one of my proudest things to do in any show, and now that I'm getting older, is by example, not by preaching, but to just live the way or do, perform mm -hmm. and, you know, yes. try to do as many shows as you can, and, and, you know, if you get sick, try to get through them, and, you know, and then remind people you can't push, you can't, you can't live crazy, you can't go out all yeah. the time, you can't be drinking, you can't be talking. But at the time, if you hadn't been experimenting, I think it wouldn't have. There'd be no hair. hair. I don't there think would hair be. would be what it is now. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that about doing shows because I would say that there's a lot of talk around Broadway now of your generation. Oh, you totally. Of course, that it, kids do not do the eight too. performances a week anymore. They have a little sniffle, a little cold, and they don't show up. I try. I've had. I got two chest infections in the first six weeks of the show and it was it's terrible you're sitting at home going mm, mm, I could get through it I hate missing the show okay. but there's just you know we're human and there's certain things you just can't get through mm. but I do I do think it is a problem and I think it's something that hopefully will write itself that the new generation will go it's just an appreciation I think of it you're on Broadway appreciation, this, people yes. are dying to do this and of their and, uh, and using the word art it's your art yeah it's your art form and you 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 are you're successful in something, and you have to focus yeah. on that. So the only orgy at hair is the one at the end of the show the when the, the show. audience comes up, and one of really the great moments happening on theater right now. You invite the the audience from the uh, to, to come up and just yeah. what have a happening with you all. Yeah, it's just it's the end. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. Was this ever in the show before to invite the audience up? Yes, it began. It wasn't at the very beginning, but it, it, it evolved. On Broadway. On Broadway, the original production. Yes, we had just mm -hmm. one little rickety set of stairs in the middle. We only had a center aisle. Now we have two very grand mm -hmm. staircases <laughs> yeah. inviting the audience up. But it was just a little, and it, it, it suddenly happened. It, 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 uh, so it was something spontaneous originally that people who were enjoying the show so much yes. just wanted to come up stay, yeah, on stage. They grabbed the people up It was, it was a very the small theater, you know, that, that little theater. Little more, the little right. theater. About half the size of <clears throat> what we have now. All right, uh, Gavin, a few celebrities who uh, you've danced with on that stage? Well, <coughs> my favorite, Nancy Pelosi, she didn't dance. <laughs> she had Secret Service, of course, all over the place. And, and they danced. Well, no, what's crazy is um, the girl who plays Chrissy, Allison Case, is gorgeous, redhead, beautiful spirit. At the end of the show, it's just Allison, so she is. She just hugs people. She walks up and down the aisle and just hugs people, and they just, they just hold on to her. She went to hug one of the Secret Service guys, and she didn't know, <laughs> and he swatted her away. He was, and she was like, and people around you, don't touch Secret Service. And she was like, <laughs> well, then you don't get up on stage. Gosh, yeah. this, <laughs> and this is Pelosi. what hair is fighting against. I know. I know. <laughs> Secret <laughs> Service people, swatting hey, actors. Screw, stay off the stage. I know. I know. <laughs> Sorry, you got mad Nancy Pelosi. I do have to say that there. It's, I was told this. I don't know if it's entirely true, but when Nancy Pelosi, she was like in the third row on the aisle, and where where do I go at the end of the first act when people are taking their clothes off? And I'm standing. I sing the song, and I'm standing downstage on the stairs, and then everyone's here. If this is the audience, and they said Nancy Pelosi, the entire song was just like. <laughs> just looking at me the entire time, and they're all standing right here getting naked, and she was like, "Oh, that's know, like my mother." They just she came to see the show, and she said, "What nude scene?" Because <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get nude. So, all right, you know, now we're we, we go might to... we might dance a little bit here. We um, have to, we're gonna. You do... guys have kindly agreed to play us a little something sure. and wow. play and sing. and sing for us. And now we're going to get a little bit of hair. We're going to hear Where Do I Go? But I first want to introduce Vince McDermott, who is Galt's son. And you're playing in the, uh, in the band at the Revival right now. Yes, I am. Right. Thank you, Vince, for joining us. All right, gentlemen, take it away. Susan has promised me she's not going to remove her clothes, even if she gets really into it. Sorry, America. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet faces that tells me why I live and die. Follow the wind song, follow the thunder, follow the neon in young lovers' eyes. Down to the gutter, up to the glitter, into the city where the truth lies. Where do I go? That tells me why I live and die. Follow the wind song, follow the thunder, follow the neon in young lovers' eyes. Down to the gutter, up to the glitter, into the city where the truth lies. Where do I go? Follow my heartbeat. Where do I go? Follow my hand. Where will they lead me? And will I ever discover why I live and die? Oh, why? I live and die. Oh, why? I live and die. Do I live? Why do I die? Tell me where 
Vince is coming yeah. out with my friends. Good night, everybody. <laughs> there you Paul go. McDermott, Vince McDermott, right. Gavin Creel, thanks a lot, and Thank Jimmy Rado. Hair uh, on Broadway nice at the Al Hirschfeld Theater. Terrific revival. Uh, make sure you see it. Thanks a lot for being our guest on Theater Talk. <laughs> Peace and love. Breaking yeah. out everywhere.